Coaches News Conference on KLPS TV is brought to you by Hawthorne Bank, a proud sponsor of Liberty School District. At Hawthorne Bank, we understand the importance of strong community in a strong school district. We also understand the importance of strong financial future for our school district's families and for our local businesses. Hawthorne Bank, with you every step. And by Jackson Hewitt. For all your tax needs, personal or business, rely on tax professionals at Jackson Hewitt and Liberty, a full service tax preparation professional. Jackson Hewitt. Hey, good morning. Um, the, uh, you know, it's what, 74 degrees yesterday and then 11 degrees on Thursday, so it sure feels somewhat like basketball season. Um, I, uh, you know, it's it's weird because usually when the weather's like this, it's it's district play and uh, the, the postseason's starting because you're closer to late February, but, um, you know, we're in a pretty important part of our season. We're two games in in conference. Um, got Platte County on Tuesday, 74-33. Uh, uh, played well uh, from kind of start to finish in that. Um, and then played um, Carney on Friday um, on Metro Sports in our coaches versus cancer game that um, helped raise, once we got the official total back, I mean, close to $2,000. Um, and then we were able to win that game 62. Uh, 53, which was a really good win for us um, against a team that's tough. So we moved to 2 and 0 in conference and 13 and 4 overall. Um, we hope that you know, yeah, we're playing one cup of games and we're playing okay, but uh, we're hoping that uh, the best basketball that we play is yet to yet to be on our table yet. So uh, two tough ones this week. Go to Raytown South, who's 2 and 1 in the conference. And then on Friday, we'll go to Grandview, who hasn't won a conference game yet, and we really don't want to be their first one. So um, two tough ones, and then get back in front of the confines of home. But um, you know, going over tonight, Ray South's really, really good. Uh, they get some guards that are as tough a guard as anybody that we've had in the city this year. So um, it'll be a really good test for us. Kind of see where we're at after a couple wins, um, see if we can go win on the road in conference, which is, which is tough to do. So. Um, we'll see what we're made of. But with that, open up to questions. Friday night, everyone came out and uh, wore their suit jackets, and I know there was a lot of controversy on why you did not take your suit jacket off. Yeah. So what was that reason? All right. Well, I'm glad you're here to ask that question. A um, couple things. First of all, we had the last four games prior to that, we had played pretty well and had left the jacket on, so I'm a little superstitious, so I didn't want to take it off. Mind you, a couple games ago, it was like 96 degrees, so I was like sweating through my suit jacket, so part of the reason I didn't want to take it off was, you know, show the sweat stains. Um, the second part, and this is in hindsight, but I had no idea. And I'm watching the replay of the game on TV, and I was incredibly uncomfortable because as I'm watching the game on TV, I have 400 students chanting, take it off. <laughs> so hindsight being what it is, um, worked out okay. But now that I'm more aware of it, um, I can be a little bit more of a team player next time. How about that? Any more good ones like that? Like, you got um, follow Friday night versus Carney. You guys were, you know, pretty evened out the first uh, couple of quarters, yeah. and then after the second half, you really just took off. What was the uh, morale? What kind of stuff did you say in the locker room? For that? You know, it was funny because <laughs> first half we have a chance on about two or three possessions. Like, like I'm not kidding you. You guys might remember this play. The deer makes a terrific defensive play in front of our bench, jumps up to save the ball because he's about to get a steal. And to get the steal, he throws the ball back because the kid's like out of bounds. So he's gonna throw the ball off the kid. The kid's not even looking. And then by the time the kid turns around, the ball hits him and kind of like sticks in his gut. Then he grabs it, throws it, and they go shoot a layup. And then 
four or five possessions later, we're guarding their number five, and we do, we're good defensively, and we, we cause him to turn it over. We get a deflection, and it goes right through our guy's hands to them, and they shoot a layup. So there's four points right there that, you know, we're just kind of in scramble situations where I told the team at half, you know, th those aren't your fault. Those are just the way the ball bounces sometimes. Um, and I thought we were just a little bit more consistent in the second half on making those plays. We did a tear. We were we were fouling like crazy in the first half. We were a step slow, uh, or a half a step slow, and so we were in the wrong position a lot. And so we got a lot of fouls, you know, hitting guys on the arm and not being in the right position, which then slowed the game down, allowed them to shoot some free throws, and um, yeah, it wasn't what we wanted, but. Um, you know, second half we just we we're a little bit more consistent, and then if we could figure out a way to make a free throw, you know, we'd be able to pull away even more. So um, overall, though, that's a tough team. That's a team that makes you play really, really well to beat them. Now that you're in your conference play, and you're having games every Tuesday, and Tuesday and Friday. Does that kind of change your team's mentality? I think it helps with with. Uh, practice preparation. They kind of know what practice should look like as far as, you know, Monday we're, you know, kind of implementing anything that, that needs to be reviewed for the game on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday we'll do a lot of game review. Thursday we'll have a lot of game prep. Saturday we'll do game review. So um, it helps the players kind of get into a rhythm of, you know, I know what to expect at practice because I know, you know, I mean, people, people in general don't like surprises. So, you know, players are always a little nervous when you get like eight or nine practices before a game. And they're a little worried, oh, guys, coach, what's he going to do? How much is he going to make us run? How hard is practice going to be? Whereas you kind of understand where we're at in the season, what it's going to look like. Now, I have told the team, you know, you, you screw this thing up, you know, we'll, we'll practice a little different. But um, we get guys, we get guys that have been through it. It helps having the experience that we do with the seniors, but then it also helps with the maturity um, of the under of the underclassmen to kind of follow that lead and understand what we're trying to do. <clears throat> what improvements do you want to make as a team uh, as you look forward to possibly play out the basketball? Well. I mean, we got to improve in every area. Um, that's the easy cop-out answer. But I mean, I think the thing specifically is when, when we, we got to score more easy baskets. We do a really good job of preventing people from scoring easy baskets. People have a hard time scoring on us. I mean, our field goal percentage defense is like 36.7%. So, you know, it takes teams about 10 trips to try to get three or four baskets on us. If you look at statistics, which is great. And for us, you know, it takes us about five trips out of 10 to score because we're, we're a little bit more efficient. So, um, you know, getting easy baskets in transition, uh, getting easy baskets because we're pretty solid defensively, getting some easy ba baskets out of our defense, a steal, maybe a block shot, uh, quick rebound outlet to, for an easy basket. And then secondly is we got to shoot better from the foul line. You know, if we can, I, I've never met a player who tries to screw up, you know, who tries to miss free throws, but at the same time, I mean, those are points we got to we got to score. We got to get them on the table because um, in close games, you know, could come down to that very much. So, uh, one, you know, I'm, maybe I'm nitpicking, but uh, I know those are things that are important in trying to win a championship. Um, what are you guys going to do tonight to beat this great tower the South team? Well, I think we. <laughs> I don't think, I know we have to handle the pressure. They've got guards uh, five and four and 23 that just guard and guard and guard like crazy. Um, so we gotta make sure our guards can get the ball across half court. And then once we get it across half court, we gotta make sure that we get a shot every possession because we can't allow, we can't allow them to turn us over, which allows them to run out, which allows easy baskets. We gotta do a good job of, of slowing them down, and it doesn't mean that we walk the ball up the floor. And, you know, it doesn't mean that we, um, you know, uh, have to pass it 14 times before we shoot. It just means that we got to be smart about our shot selection to not play into their tempo. And then the other thing we got to do is we got to guard their dribble penetration. They're pretty good about breaking you down and, and making guys help, and then they throw it out to guys that are open or uh, this J.C. Johnson kid that they've got. I mean, this kid scored 30 points and a half. You know, I told the, you guys, I told the team, I mean, we don't have it. Uh, sometimes our team can't score 30 points in a game, nonetheless a half, and this kid did it. Um, so he's just a, a great scorer. And then they got a kid eligible uh, here the past couple days who's a terrific player. Um, 
I mean, hey, they're they're three and one in conference. You know, we're we're two and zero, oh or they're two and one in conference. We're two and zero. Oh, so, um, you know, two good teams. Uh, who are some players that you'd like to see step up, and some players that have stepped up? Well, you know, the last um, the last probably three games or so, um, I think Jolly's done a better job of just playing better, just being more consistent. And uh, Chris Ganowski from the Tribune after the game on Friday asked me, he said, you know, what have you done different for Jolly? I said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know, I mean, nothing's been done different. He's just playing better. Um, so he stepped up and, and, and done well. Um, I think that I th we got three guards, three really good guards that start for us. And then a handful of guards that come off the bench that are, that are good players. But at no point have we had our three starting guards play their best game at the same time. Jake, Starr, Nadir. Nadir won us the McPherson game. Without him, I don't know if we win it. Jake probably won us the Pork Hill South game the first time. And then Starr's probably won us a handful of games here and there. But at no point have those guys all played well at the same time. So what we've got to do is we have to have some sort of consistency of performance from our team, from each individual, so that we understand how we can function at like that optimal level. Because once district and, and tournament play comes around, you know, I mean, you've got to be playing well. If you're not playing well, you're going home. And, and I want to see those guys playing well at the same time because then it's going to give our team confidence. But our bench is starting to, uh, you know, play a little bit better. They're getting a little bit more familiar with their minutes and their, their roles and their value to the team and, and what they can bring. So, um, you know, I, I just need we, – we want to see consistency from them all for us to really be better. With all the exposure you guys are getting this year on, you know, through like television broadcast or internet broadcast, does that affect you as a coach at all? No. How about no, no, not at all. I mean, it. Um, it's great. It, the only thing it does for me as a coach is make me really proud of my team um, because they deserve the exposure that we get. You know, I mean, there's, you know, there's a difference between exposure and exposed. And I don't think that we get exposed when we're on TV, you know. Uh, or, but I, it just makes me proud because there's a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to watch it. You know, I've got good friends that live out on the West Coast. And my brother lives in California, um, and he's able to watch some games. And so then, you know, he's able to see the team and feel like he knows the team, and we're able to talk about it. And, um, but that, to me, it doesn't in game or anything. It doesn't that matter to me at all. Um, but from a player standpoint, I mean, I don't know. I've never talked to the guys about it, Ryan, but I got to think it probably means something to them. <laughs> you know, I mean, I got to think that they're pretty excited about it and uh, they like the fact that they're on TV. I joked with them the other day, they're on TV more than Duke or Kansas. I mean, my God, we've been on like 10 times. Um, some of our guys probably shouldn't be on TV, but, you know, hey, that's. Uh, yeah, you guys a little tight this morning. That was a joke. Um, they. Uh, but, you know, it's good for us. It's good for our program. It's 10 total times that we've been on TV, and, um, you know, we've performed well in them, so uh, we're happy for them. So. All right, guys, thanks. Um, on the road Tuesday, Friday. Um, I know we get some loyal fans and some loyal people in here who probably make it on out. So I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, thanks for all you guys do, and let, let me know if you need anything. Okay? Thank you.